something, what's something from your childhood that uh -huh. reflects how God made you? Please. I want the anointing signature. Okay, the anointing So I instantly just thought of like when I was a kid. Super little, like four, three, four, five. Sorry. My grandma used to always pull me around the neighborhood in her little red wagon, and I would go around the neighborhood. And every time, every time, wherever we went, I would always ask her, "What is that? What is that? What is that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that?" That's so good. And she would tell me the word for everything that there was. But for each stage of my life, I think I just always had that curiosity. Where I was always so just awesome. wondering, like, "What is that? What is that?" Or what is this? What is this? And I just remember my grandma used to tell me like, that's a rock or that's a mailbox or that's grass, whatever it is. I gotta say it. And it's just funny because I was wondering what words were, you know? Just throughout my whole life, I've just been super curious, you know? And um, I think it's just the nature of like, you know, seeking and finding and, you know, knocking and having it being open. And so, yeah, like that just to answer the question how God made me, like I'm curious, you know? Yeah. So I just yeah. wanna, wanna find the answers to things, so. Amen. Amen. But I'm also okay not knowing everything. Like, I'm happy yeah. about it. We love you, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff's awesome. Jeff's awesome. Nice. So guy. awesome. I was a good kid, but let's just say I got into some kid stuff when I was there, like starting fires behind houses and uh, I see, I see that your Instagram. Get in trouble at school or something, but I'd have always the most repentant heart. When I knew when I did something wrong, I would look, literally cry. And <laughs> <laughs> I would go, I, I would just like, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, it. Mom. She's like, what, Aww. what? And I, I would just like uh, <laughs> go up to her and just tell her everything. I, I just couldn't hold it in, you know? Aww. And uh, Aww, good kid. But then she, would, I would be like forgiven. And my mom, like, she didn't discipline me. Like, <laughs> you know how some parents <laughs> <have their school. laughs> You know, <laughs> I'll just be real. It was like maybe a couple days or a day, you know. Um, and she didn't put super strict disciplines and like whoop me super hard and all this stuff. She's very, uh, very just graceful, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that helped me to be graceful with myself, you know. Um, and just now even in the future in life too, you know what I mean? Because some, sometimes when people, kids are disciplined and stuff, they start to hate themselves. You know, and self hatred starts and, and, and things like that. And, uh, but I just remember, yeah, just having such a repentant heart. And the way that when you repent, somebody responds to you really matters, right? So, yeah, so that's good. I think that's also on the parents' part to recognize, like, a kid being genuinely repentant. And yeah. so, because, like, my parents wouldn't ground me for super long, but they knew, like, I was the same, bro. If I did yeah. something wrong, like, I was sorry, you know yeah, what I mean? I didn't yeah. want to be a bad kid. Right. I think, like, where it gets twisted is when the parents just want to, like, prove something or they're disciplining, like, out of, like, having authority and power rather than saying, like, oh, wow, my kid actually knows what they did was wrong. Yep. And still, like, disciplining, but not in a way that makes them feel bad. It's like, even more discouraged. That's What's that mean. verse about fathers treating their children, like, not, um aggravating their kids or provoking their kids to anger or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a good father recognizes yeah. like, wow, my son actually knows that what they did was wrong and they actually feel bad about it. You know what I mean? And that repentance, like that godly sorrow is enough, like enough of a punishment to feel like broken or like, wow. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? That's punishment enough. Still like, having that healthy discipline balance, but love at the same time. Yeah. Because most, most, some parents, they don't know who they are. Right. And they're just going to lash out. Yeah. Because this is, this is how their parents train them up and, Get on in your boy, you know, stuff like that. When it's it's not really right, you know. But there is a time of healthy correction, being firm, but also gentle at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did like adventures and stuff, and we'd find like the weirdest but coolest thing. Every now and then, like do this report thing, and I I always like had my dad get out the camera and like I'd stand in front of it and be like, I was like, guys. This right here is a piece from the Apollo spaceship. It fell and like I was making sure everybody knew. I always wanted all the information like I would find out. I always wanted people to know, you know, and it's like now that, you know, we know Jesus, like we all oh, we want to tell everyone about Jesus. And like I know all this information. I'm like, don't you know, like, you know, sharing Jesus with my family. Like I was sharing the story about, you know, Abraham and Sarah and how they couldn't have a kid. And, my cousin's like, I've never heard that before. And I'm like, wow. it's in the Bible. And I was like, just open up the Bible. Like, you'll get this information. She's like, I didn't even know that. I just love when, like, there's information that 
I have knowledge of and like sharing it with someone else and they're like I have no idea but that's what the Lord like called us to do like to spread the love of Jesus to everyone let people know what's going on like you know we're coming together you know, getting close and I love what you said about like you know um all of us coming together and like enjoying being with each other because like that's the one thing like coming back from Israel I was just like that's so true like we're supposed to be together like Jesus would literally walk by the Sea of Galilee and people were just following him they didn't even have social media and all the people were coming together you know yeah so it's just so amazing um, <laughs> what? he had more followers than I did wow so Jesus is really up there man <laughs> it's just so amazing to, to like see how back in the day was different, you know? If you have a family and you get married, you build on top of the house. So like you always stay home, you always stay connected to the family. They're always coming together. Like that's amazing. Because we don't in America you look at that and we don't do that. Like we don't even do that. Like we don't even have a day of rest. You know, it's like go, 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 go. Or like let me look at my phone. You know, even coming back and going to school and every student is like this. Uh, I'm like trying to talk to yeah. someone. <laughs> All right, yeah. Seth just threw the phone away. <laughs> but you know, it just reminds me of like, this and like being personal is so important. Way better. Oh yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's yours. Well, my grandparents have always uh, they've had a daycare for the past like. It just closed it down probably like last year or whatever. Pretty old now, so they can't do it. But I remember when I was a kid, I used to work in their daycare. I used to help take care of the kids. And used to help take care of them, you know, change diapers and yep. take the diapers out and all of that. So I knew at a young age that I wanted to be a dad. So I volunteered for, it's called Johnny and Friends. It's a camp where children with disabilities come. And I remember my mom, she made me go. She's like, there's this camp, it's a Christian camp, you're going. And I told her, I said, no, I'm not, you're tripping, I'm not going. And she said, yes, you are, and you're gonna leave your phone. And I was like, no, I'm not, <laughs> you're tripping, I'm not doing that. And she's like, yes, you are, you're going. And I remember attitude all the way up there. <laughs> attitude all the way up there. And I get on campus, and my attitude changes. Wow. Wow. Oh, the presence. Yeah, bro. Amen. And that it, immediately, my attitude changes, and I started to get around the kids. And it was a week-long camp, so I had a buddy that I spent a whole week with, and I just knew that I just love kids. Um, and um, wow. and I fell in love with it. So, oh, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just have a heart for kids. And, Mm. I really just can't wait to be a dad and mm. it's just the the wonderful part just about my testimony when I gave my life to the Lord last year in March. Um, I didn't have my dad growing up in my life. I didn't have my dad growing up in my life and my only father figure that I did have, he died when I was 11. Um, so when God came into my life, he came into my life as my, as my dad. Mm. And I remember telling my friends, I was like, it feels like I have two parents now. And wow. I never felt that before. Wow. So, so yeah, my heart is for kids and can't wait to have kids of my own. So if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here right now. Dude. Wow. Wow. Shout out. Was, she was, she was, shout she was, out. She was working hey, for me mom. Mom. on the streets. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. So. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. In elementary school, I had this weird natural ability to get every single other kid to like me. Like, I, I don't know what it was, but I could get everybody on my side about anything. I had the concept of Jesus in my mind and I genuinely, like, had this huge heart for people. There would be, you know, my group of friends, which was all the kids that, you know, as far as the world's concerned, like the popular kids and everything like that. And there would be kids that had nobody. And I would intentionally go out and say, we need to bring this person into our group. We need to have them come hang out with us. And sometimes I would get backlash. But for whatever reason, I just had God's grace. I was able to influence even the most stubborn kids to embrace the kids that nobody wanted to hang out with. Wow. To embrace those that nobody wanted to hang out with. Those that were rejected. Those that were like alone. You know, and I 
I enjoyed that. that. I really thrived on that to the point where it was just completely selfless. Like I would disclude myself just to include other people into that group. And so um, I think that just kind of translates to where God, God wants me in the future is bringing unity, bringing a place where we love one another genuinely. Yeah. There's no selflessness. I mean, we, we talked earlier um, in a previous question about, you know, what's God putting on your heart? For me, I, I wanted God to, to simplify what it is that he changed in my life, what it is that the gospel actually did. And, you know, we say the term sin a lot. It seems so foreign or so broad, like what is sin, what is not sin? You, know, you can go down to the individual rules, but I think the simplicity of sin is, the root of sin is selfishness. Mm -hmm. Everything that is, every sin that exists, whether it's against your brother, whether against God, it's you being self-focused and selfish against either God or against mm -hmm. uh, your brother and sister. And so I think, you know, from an early age, God really has always given me his grace to be selfless and not think about you know how I look or what I, what I'm benefiting from it but how can I bring everyone else in for for their sake to make them feel loved to make them feel accepted and uh, and that translates to where he's going to take me going forward as well so yeah it's good man that's a good word as a child I was always very uh, my mom would call it probably extreme, like either really hot or really cold. Growing up, I was always trying to find my identity. I've always wanted to find myself and find myself through things, because in the world that's what you do. So, I, for example, I bought a drum set. I spent, and it was always extreme, so I'd buy a thousand dollar drum set. And okay, all right, I'm gonna be a drummer. This is gonna be my life. I'm gonna dedicate myself to it. I played it for about a month, and it collected dust. It was soccer. I would just dive into whatever that was full on head first and, and devote myself to it completely. And oftentimes it would lead to burnout and then I went fishing was another one. I think the Lord used that and now looking back, I realized that we were created for one purpose and we were created to give our wow. all to Him. Yeah. And, and put all chips in on oh, Him. Yeah. And so I think I had that extreme nature. It was just like, man, the world, you're looking for an outlet. So in the world, it's just like, I want, I'm trying to find something and some are different than others. But for me, I had a big gap between that. So when I found Jesus, man, it made all the sense in the world. It's like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been looking for. Yeah. Just give him my all and let him fulfill everything else. God in us to come on the outside and to transform nature, our lives, his, his nature, his character, his fruit, his healing, everything, everything about his kingdom, uh, turning the other cheek, you know, going low and slow. He's made it so simple for us. If we focus on one thing, he's promised to add all of the things. It's not just like close food and worry about everything else. He's saying, guys, I'll take care of your food, your clothes, your every area of life. Don't even worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I've got it. Yeah. Focus on one thing. Amen. Give give yourself to me. Thank Surrender you. to me. Go all in for me. And it's really freeing because it, I used to worry and look ahead and try to plan life out. Yeah. And it freed me to be like, today, daily bread. Mm -hmm. Him, his presence. I woke up for one reason, to look like him. And, yeah. and however else it happens, he'll add things to me necessary to fulfill the Thank destiny you, and the will of God. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched Avatar The Last Airbender? Yes. Yes. That show was yes. fire. fire. Yeah, Love I that loved show. that show. I loved that game Win. so much. They controlled like the elements, so they controlled fire, they controlled water, air, earth, all of that. I used to play pretend. Going into my backyard and there was this big puddle and I would like try to like water bend, you know, like how like my, like I literally was oh. seeking like to water bend. Like. So in a TV show you're either like a Wait. firebender yeah. or waterbender. Yeah. Basically you can control elements. So. Yeah, like, okay. so like, like if I put my hand out to like a puddle of water, like I could do this and use like the force. As kids, we're so natural to like look for like miraculous things. Mm -hmm. And we ha have like these wild imaginations and like it always wow. points back to like, yeah, because the Lord, he wants to meet beyond oh. our wildest dreams. And he yes. wants, to, like his desire is so good. Like to know like he only has good things for us. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel like I'm still letting that sit in my heart. Like it's head knowledge, but I'm still letting it sit in my heart of like, God, you really want the best for me. Like, I don't need to punish myself. I don't need to do this or feel bad. Like, you literally, your heart is, like, so for me. You want the best for me. Mm -hmm. And so, Ephesians 3, and this is the Passion Translation. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited, limited.
the riches of his glory and favor until never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination oh <laughs> been kind of childlike in my life and I feel like God is, is something that God kind of called me to just to not take life too seriously even when I was a kid and I just remember going to the park and like swinging on a, on a swing set and just feeling God's presence then and just mm -hmm. his his joy and his peace and going to family gatherings and sharing the gospel with people even at like four or five years old and I think God was just showing me then like as I get older older to you know carry his presence wherever I go mm -hmm. and just be childlike you know in our faith so I think oftentimes we get so serious. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit wants to move through us. He wants to to be there and part of our meetings, but you know, when we're so serious, you know, I'm speaking to myself, it's like it, you know, maybe pushes some away sometimes, but I really, yeah, it's like a childlikeness, like taking that, you know, wherever yeah. we go and just, you know, asking the Lord to come. And so even like now, like I'll go to the park by myself. Oh. I know it sounds like kiddish, but I'll put worship music on. And I'll just go on the swings and I'll just get lost. Just like get lost in worship with Jesus. Oh. I'm having a bad day. You know what? I'm gonna go spend time with, with my best friend, Jesus. And so oh. just putting that music on and just swinging. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, all summer with him, you know, and it, it's like he'll encounter you, you know. If there's anything in your life that you know that's troubling you, Jesus will encounter you because he loves you. Yeah. And it's like go back to, to being childlike. Yeah. yeah. You know, remember yeah. When you first met Jesus, your first love, and he'll be your love forever. There were so many things the Lord kept bringing to my mind, because I feel like my whole life now is still like my childhood. Like my dad would show me something, I'm like, oh my gosh! And I'd like freak out and be like, whoa, look at that! And then I'm like, everybody would get excited, and be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna fish! Like, and I'd be like freaking out and like going to everybody's face and grabbing their face, like, we gotta fish! And like screaming in their face and like, from everyone and so I'm just like getting so jacked about nothing. I really feel like God's given me this perspective just of like seeing people rightly. Even when division or something tries to come, picture them as a, as a little child. Yeah. Amen. yeah. I'm just like in my mind's eye right now. I'm just picturing everybody right now as just a little child. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Katrina as a little child, Georgia. Yeah. It relinquishes anger or any yeah. division. It just makes yeah. you want to come and bring unity wow. to them. When you look at them at the place of little Cameron, as little Seth, wow. like, innocent. Like, that's how God sees us. You know? Yeah, yeah. 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 don't believe the best in them. Yeah. yeah, you do when they're a child. Yeah. You just believe just the best. Look, you're choking on yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.